Hello everyone, my name is Melissa and I'm 28 years old. Many people often wonder why I'm single, and I think it's time I shared my story. A few years back, I wasn't single. I was happily married to the man I thought was my dream come true. But as life teaches us, not all dreams unfold as we hope. My marriage, once perfect in my eyes, crumbled when I discovered a startling truth about my husband, Henry. Initially, everything seemed idyllic, as is often the case. Henry and I started as good friends. The first time I laid eyes on him, I couldn't look away. My best friend, Julie, noticed right away. One day at work, I approached her desk excitedly. Hey, Julie, have you seen the new guy, Henry? He's seriously handsome, isn't he? Julie chuckled. Oh, I noticed him. He's definitely a catch. And look at you. You've got that sparkle in your eye. I blushed, dismissing it lightly. What? No, I just think he's good looking, that's all. Sure, just good looking, she teased. Melissa, you should go talk to him. You're both single and it seems like fate's playing a part. You won't know unless you try. She had a point. Maybe you're right, but what if he's not interested? Melissa, confidence is key. Just be yourself and start a conversation. You never know where it might lead. Encouraged by Julie, I decided to take a chance. During our break, I saw Henry struggling with the coffee machine and seized the opportunity to help. Here you go, I said, handing him a cup of coffee. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Melissa. Hi, Melissa, I'm Henry. If you don't mind, maybe we could grab some snacks after work and chat more? I was a bit too eager in my reply, which made me instantly regretful. But before I could backtrack, Henry smiled warmly. Why not? How could I say no to such a beautiful invitation? I was thrilled. That was the beginning of our dating journey, which blossomed into more. We had many beautiful moments, like the time we sat on a park bench and Henry looked at me with such love, making me feel cherished and special. We even joked about our first meeting at that very spot. But as you know, life can be unpredictable, and the perfect picture I had of my marriage eventually shattered. I hope by sharing my story, others can see that sometimes the paths we take teach us important lessons about love and resilience. Of course, I remember Melissa. How could I forget? That day completely changed my life. You always manage to make me blush, don't you? Well, it's easy when I'm looking at the most beautiful person in the world, I replied, smiling. Henry, stop it. You're going to make me melt, I said, feeling overwhelmed with affection. Melissa, there's something I've been wanting to ask you, Henry said, his voice filled with emotion. What is it, Henry? I asked, my heart beating faster. Melissa, I love you more than anything in this world. Will you make me the happiest man alive and marry me? Henry proposed, his eyes full of hope. I was ecstatic, almost screaming with happiness. Henry was the most handsome and kind-hearted man I had ever met. He had a way of making every moment joyful. At that moment, I felt like I had received the most precious gift I had ever longed for. Yes, Henry, a big yes, I exclaimed. We embraced each other tightly, sealing our love with a passionate kiss. It was a beautiful beginning to our journey toward marriage and whatever lay ahead. I was so excited. I couldn't keep it to myself. I had to tell my best friend, Julie. You will not believe what just happened. Henry proposed to me and I said yes, I told her. What? Melissa, that's incredible. But aren't you two just starting to date? Maybe you should take some more time to think about it, Julie cautioned. I know it might seem fast, Julie, but when you know, you just know. Henry and I share something special, something deep. I can feel it in my heart, I explained. I get that, but marriage is a big step. You must ensure you're on the same page about everything. You've only been dating for a short while, Julie replied, her concern evident. Julie, I know it's quick, but I've never been more sure about anything in my life. Henry and I have talked about our dreams, our values, and our future. We are on the same page, and I can see how much he loves me, I reassured her. Well, if you're sure about it and he makes you happy, then that's what matters most. 
Just remember, I'm here for you no matter what, Julie said, her support unwavering. Thank you, Julie. Your support means the world to me. I truly believe this is the right decision. I'm so excited about our future together, I told her, feeling grateful and optimistic. We got married in a beautiful ceremony surrounded by our close friends and family. It felt like all our dreams had come true when we exchanged vows and rings, marking the start of our new life together. From the moment Henry and I exchanged our vows, I wholeheartedly believed that our life together would be nothing short of perfect. That first year truly felt like an enchanting adventure. We were deeply immersed in that blissful honeymoon phase, almost like characters in a fairy tale, surrounded by love and wonder. We cherished countless sweet moments and stayed up late into the night sharing our hopes and dreams. It felt like living in a storybook. But, as they often say, time has a way of peeling back the layers, revealing the true essence of things. As more time passed and we settled into the rhythm of married life, the initial dazzle began to fade and we started to notice each other's flaws and quirks. It was akin to seeing the imperfect parts of a flower you adore, still beautiful, but not without its blemishes. I started feeling somewhat neglected by Henry. There was this one evening, not long after a trivial argument that had blown out of proportion the night before, when the tension in the living room was palpable. I couldn't stand the distance growing between us, so I decided it was time to clear the air. Henry, we need to talk, I said, the urgency clear in my voice. What is it, Melissa? You've been so distant lately, he replied his eyes avoiding mine. You're always on your phone, you come home late, and you've been canceling our date nights for weeks. Henry seemed reluctant to confront the issue, offering up the usual busy at work excuse. It's just work, Melissa. You know how stressful it's been. I understand that work can be tough, but it feels like you're keeping something from me. Are we okay? I pressed, seeking reassurance. Of course we're okay, it's just that I've been dealing with a lot and didn't want to burden you with it, he responded, still not meeting my gaze. You know we're supposed to share everything, Henry. When you're hurting, I'm hurting too. Please talk to me, I pleaded. Let's not turn this into another fight like last night. I need to focus on my work today, he said dismissively, effectively shutting down the conversation. That exchange left me heartbroken. I had hoped we could resolve our issues, but it became clear that it wasn't the right time to delve deeper. Then, one quiet day at the office, Julie approached me, noticing my somber mood. Hey, Melissa, what's wrong? You look so sad, she said with concern. Julie, I've been noticing something lately and it's bothering me. Henry has been distant and seems to be ignoring me, I confided, the weight of my worries evident in my tone. We're just not like we used to be, I confessed to Julie, feeling the weight of the change in my relationship. Oh, Melissa, I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe he's going through something tough right now. You know, sometimes people need a little space to sort out their issues, Julie suggested gently. Yeah, I've considered that possibility, but it's just so unlike him. We used to share everything, and now it feels like he's closing himself off, I replied the confusion and hurt clear in my voice. It's important to keep the lines of communication open, Melissa. Maybe approach him gently, ask if everything is okay, and let him know you're there for him no matter what. Sometimes just knowing someone cares can make a difference, Julie advised. You're right, Julie. I'll give him some space for now, but I plan to have a calm conversation with him soon. I just really miss how things used to be between us. I said, longing for the closeness we once had. I'm sure you two can work through this. Relationships have their ups and downs, but with love and understanding, you'll find your way back to each other, Julie encouraged, giving me a hopeful smile. Thank you, Julie, I replied, feeling a bit better after our talk. Over the next few days, I tried to stay calm at home, but tensions were mounting. Julie was preoccupied with her issues, which meant we couldn't spend much time together. 
and she seemed a bit off whenever we did talk. Eventually, Julie called me out for coffee, and of course, I agreed, eager for any support from my best friend. As we sat in the cafe, sipping our coffee, I couldn't help but notice Julie's unusual behavior. Julie, you've been acting strange lately. Is there something you're not telling me? I asked concern in my voice. Melissa, promise you won't get angry? Julie started, her tone serious, which immediately alarmed me. What's going on, Julie? You're scaring me, I pressed, needing to understand her hesitance. Well, I overheard Angela talking on the phone the other day. She mentioned meeting up with a married man, Julie confessed, her eyes not meeting mine. Angela? Why would she be involved with a married man? I questioned, puzzled and increasingly anxious. Melissa, I didn't want to jump to conclusions, but I think it might be Henry, Julie said slowly, her voice trembling with the weight of her suspicion. What? Henry, are you sure? I gasped, my heart sinking. I'm not certain, but the pieces seem to fit, and it terrifies me to even think about it, Julie admitted. This can't be true. Henry would never do that to me, would he? The seeds of doubt planted by Julie's words began to grow. My mind raced with suspicion about my husband's loyalty. Julie's nervousness over the past few days now made sense. Was Henry cheating on me? And with Angela, who was only 18? How could she be involved with him? The mere thought of them together sent chills down my spine, marking the beginning of a tumultuous period filled with doubt and fear. I had even seen them together, Julie. And you mentioned that Henry had been losing interest in me these past few weeks, so I'm starting to think maybe he's cheating on me. I shared, the realization dawning on me. As tears streamed down my cheeks, Julie wrapped her arms around me in a comforting hug. But I've always loved him. Why would he do this to me? I sobbed, feeling betrayed. Melissa, think about it. Remember how everything changed after you gave him power of attorney over your property? That property is ancestral and worth a lot. It seems like Henry might have taken advantage of your trust, Julie suggested, her voice filled with concern. Hearing this, a cold realization washed over me. I've made a huge mistake. I'm going to leave him. I resolved, my voice shaky but determined. Yes, he does not deserve you, but before you do anything, maybe you should confront him and let him know you're aware of his actions. It could teach him a lesson, Julie advised, supportive but stern. You're right, Julie. I can't let him get away with this so easily, I agreed, my resolve hardening. After planning a few steps with Julie, I left the cafe feeling fortified for the confrontation ahead. When I arrived home, Henry was, as usual, engrossed in his phone, I approached him with a firm stance. Henry, we need to talk. You've been very distant and your behavior isn't changing, I said, my tone serious. Melissa, there's something I need to tell you, Henry replied, finally looking up from his phone with a troubled expression. What is it, Henry? I demanded, bracing myself. I can't keep this from you any longer. I've been having an affair, Henry confessed, his voice barely a whisper. Even though I had braced myself for the truth, hearing him admit it was a different kind of pain, tears welled in my eyes as he shamelessly acknowledged his betrayal. Are you serious? How could you do this after everything we've been through? I asked, my voice breaking. I don't know, Melissa. I just started losing interest and there's someone else now, Henry admitted, his tone detached, revealing the full extent of his indifference. Furious and heartbroken, I pressed him further. Who is she? How long has this been going on? Her name is Angela, and it's been a few months, Henry said coldly, confirming my worst fears. Our entire marriage, our love, and everything we had built together seemed like a lie. How could you do this? I cried out, the pain of his betrayal slicing through me. Henry left the room, clearly wanting to avoid further confrontation. He likely hoped for a divorce, probably to be with her. After a few hours, I was lying on my bed, trying to process everything when Henry returned. Melissa, there's something else you need to know, he said as he entered the room. What is it now, Henry? I asked, barely able to look at him, 
Not sure I could handle more heartache. I brought Angela here, he revealed, adding yet another layer of shock and disbelief to an already unbearable day. Henry's declaration that he wanted a divorce hit me like a storm out of nowhere. I thought this would be the best way to make you leave, he said, his tone almost apologetic yet resolute. What struck me harder was that he had brought her with him. This is Angela, and she's the one I've been seeing. The absurdity of the situation was overwhelming, and in a bizarre twist of emotion, I burst into laughter. Henry and Angela stared at me, their expressions a mix of confusion and shock, clearly not expecting this reaction. They had anticipated many scenarios, but laughter was not one of them. Melissa, can you please explain why you're laughing? Henry asked, desperation creeping into his voice. This is just so ironic, Henry. No, this isn't funny. It's far from it, I replied, trying to regain my composure. But sometimes, when you're faced with something so unexpected and bizarre, laughter is the only way to cope. Coping with what? Angela interjected, her voice tinged with annoyance and confusion. Coping with the fact that my husband, whom I've loved deeply, chose my best friend's little sister as his mistress. It's like a plot twist in a tragic comedy, I said, my laughter fading into a more somber tone. I never wanted to hurt you like this, Melissa, Henry tried to explain, his face showing a hint of guilt. I know, Henry, and I know you never truly felt anything for me. Now you've made your decision, but that doesn't change what you did. What happens next, though, is up to me, I said, my voice steady but filled with a mix of anger and resolution. As I explained, Henry's expression shifted, and Angela, on the verge of tears, looked utterly lost. I held no ill will towards her. She was just a young girl caught in a situation far beyond her maturity. But Henry, that was a different story. And Henry, that's not the only reason I was laughing. There's more to reveal, I continued, pausing for effect. If you're with Angela and you no longer love me, then there's no reason for me to stay. It's time for us to move on. This is not what I had planned, but sometimes things just don't turn out the way we expect, I concluded, my decision clear. I left the house Henry and I shared, knowing he had married me for my property and expecting that he would soon realize the full implications of his actions. I went to Julie's home, where we sat in her cozy living room, anxiously waiting for Henry's inevitable call. As expected, my phone finally rang. Hello, Henry, what do you want now? I answered, my voice cool and detached. I want to say sorry, Julie. I got attracted to Angela, but I have come to understand the importance of Melissa's love, he blurted out, his voice desperate. Shut up, Henry, you are so shameless. Please, Julie, can I talk to Melissa for a while? He pleaded. I took the phone from Julie, feeling a tumultuous mix of anger and resignation. What is it, Henry? I'm sorry for whatever I've done, Melissa, he said, his voice pleading. Come on, Henry, don't make me laugh. Looks like you found out about the power of attorney you just lost, I said, my voice firm, signaling the final closure of our chapter together. Henry's confession of infidelity hit hard, and his silence on the phone only added to the gravity of the situation. Henry, did you think you could do this without any consequences? I asked, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Melissa... Yes, that's right. I found out before you could tell me, I continued, cutting off his stammering attempt at an apology. I knew something was off, and I'm not a naive person anymore. There's no room for love in my heart for someone who betrays me. Melissa, please, I'm sorry I have nothing left to. Henry's voice trailed off, his excuses weak and unconvincing. I wish you had thought about that before. I replied sharply, don't expect anything from me now. With that, I ended the call, and Julie looked at me with a mix of pride and sympathy. It took me weeks to start moving past that incident. Letting go of someone you once loved deeply is never easy, 
even when betrayal casts a long shadow over the memories. But I knew I had to choose what was best for me, and I worked on moving forward with my life, bolstered by the unwavering support of my best friend, Julie. I managed to secure a better job, Julie. Thank you for being there for me through all of this, I said one day as we shared a quiet moment of reflection. Of course, Melissa, you're stronger than you think. I'm glad to see you rebuilding your life, Julie responded, her encouragement warming my heart. Yeah, I got that job offer I've always wanted. It's amazing, I beamed, a sense of accomplishment filling me. I've realized I don't need someone who betrays my trust. I'm better off without Henry. You have come a long way, Julie agreed, her voice full of admiration. It had been a few months since those painful events, and both Julie and I were trying to mend our spirits and heal. Then, unexpectedly, Angela appeared at Julie's door. She looked exhausted and burdened, as if the weight of her own experiences with Henry had finally caught up to her. She hesitated at the doorstep, probably wondering how Julie would react. Despite my residual anger, I knew that Angela deserved a chance to explain herself. With a deep sigh, I gestured for her to come inside. Julie, I need to talk to you, Angela said, her voice weary. I could see the fatigue in her eyes and the slump of her shoulders. Despite my deep-seated frustrations, I didn't want the situation to escalate into something worse. It seemed Angela might have left Henry, or perhaps he had pushed her away as he had done with me. Either way, she looked like she needed understanding, not judgment. I gestured for Angela to sit down, hoping that a conversation might help us untangle the complex web of emotions and events that had brought us here. As she settled into the seat, her first words were an admission of regret. I made a terrible mistake, Julie, but now I want to correct it. I left Henry and I came back because he's bankrupt now. His bad habits finally caught up with him, Angela confessed, her voice tremulous. And why should we care? Julie snapped, her anger palpable. I could understand her feelings. After all, Angela's actions had deeply hurt us both. Yet as I looked at Angela, I remembered how isolating it felt to leave Henry, how alone I had been. Motivated by this memory, I found myself speaking up, hoping to bridge the gap between Julie's anger and Angela's distress. Julie, please let her explain, I urged gently. Julie, I know I hurt you and Melissa deeply and I regret it every day, but I also believe that family should stick together in tough times and I have nowhere else to go. Angela pleaded, her voice cracking with emotion. Angela, you chose your path when you got involved with Henry. I can't just forget how you contributed to breaking Melissa's heart, Julie retorted, her gaze stern. Caught between my care for both Julie and Angela, I felt a profound tension. I've always believed that forgiveness could alleviate pain, not just for the forgiven, but for the forgiver as well. Perhaps it was time to let go of the bitterness that was only serving to poison us further. Julie, I forgave her. Forgiveness isn't about forgetting. It's about letting go of the anger that weighs us down. It's part of moving on, I explained, hoping my words would resonate. Julie, I am genuinely sorry for what I did. I'll do whatever it takes to make amends, Angela added earnestly. I need time to think, Angela. This isn't something I can decide on right now, Julie said, her voice thick with emotion as she tried to process everything. Angela left shortly after, and all I could hope for was that, in time, Julie might find it within herself to forgive Angela, not for Angela's sake, but for her peace. The real fault lay with Henry, and he was already facing the consequences of his actions. Yet, the emotional scars he left behind lingered on. The betrayal had left me with a deep-seated mistrust, particularly towards men, which I still struggled to overcome. Recovering from such a betrayal is a slow and often painful process. However, amidst the tumult, I discovered a new sense of emotional independence. I was learning to rely more on myself and finding strength in my autonomy, and that was something to be happy about.